we are uh, um, establishing quorum at the moment, and so please stand by. We will be started shortly. Thank you. Again, um, repeating, the Homelessness and Poverty Committee meeting scheduled for 10 a.m. is due to start shortly. Thank you. One. We are live, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone. We welcome you to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Homelessness and Poverty Committee. Today is Thursday, June 24. And uh, Mark Ridley Thomas here, please serve as chair of the committee. I'm now I'm going to ask if the clerk would establish a quorum. Yes, Mr. Chair. Council Member Ridley Thomas. Here. Thank you. Council Member Kevin DeLeon. Here. Thank you. Asia. Council Member Joe Buscaino. Council Member Buscaino. Not present yet. Council Member Rodriguez. Here. Thank you. Council Member Raman. Here. And back to Council Member Buscaino. And he's not with us just yet. Mr. Chair, we have four members and a quorum, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, I do expect uh, all members to be present today, uh, and uh, we will proceed and acknowledge accordingly at that time. Uh, good morning to all members who are here. Before we get started in earnest, I thought it might be helpful, as is our <clears throat> custom, to provide an overview of the agenda for the benefit of the listening audience so that they are clear as to um, what our plan is. And so we will discuss items one and two and seek to approve the balance of the items on consent. Item one is an update on the right to housing motion and the report back. And Sewell, the general manager of the city's uh, housing and community investment department, will give a brief update uh, that will be verbal. And then item number two is a summation of our four part series examining governance related to homelessness. Uh, today is my hope that the committee will advance recommendations uh, for the uh, full council to um, consider. We'll say more about that as we move uh, forward. It, it may be anticipated that that will be the, uh, the main uh, of the meeting in terms of uh, the time that we uh, spend going deeper into policy considerations today. Item number three is the CAO's ninth uh, quarterly expenditure report on the state funds called HEAP, uh, which the city received in October of 2018. And we're on track to spend these funds uh, by the mandatory deadline of June uh, 30th. It's important for us to track. Item number four is the CAO's seventh report on uh, roadmap interventions, which were the result of the June 16, um, 2020 agreement between the city and county to jointly fund 6,700 um, interventions for people experiencing homelessness. 6,000 of those interventions had to be uh, new funding uh, commitments. And uh, then item number five is a draft ordinance in response to a motion to facilitate and expedite safe parking on Department of Transportation lots. Item number six, then, is the result of a competitive RFP uh, to select um, the developers of a city-owned property in CD13. Uh, the highest scoring team is proposing to build 108 affordable uh, apartments for extremely low-income households. On that matter, I will um, make a um, amendment and amendment to ensure that there will be sufficient community engagement as this effort goes forward. Uh, stay tuned for that. And then item number seven uh, will allow the city to start planning and preparing for the next round of state um, home key funding, uh, which will continue uh, the work that is underway to acquire and rehab underused buildings and convert them to affordable, supportive housing units. Uh, as you'll hear uh, 
uh, during the right to housing update, all of these items will be, uh, we will approve today are sorely needed to expand uh, the housing and services resources to meet the tremendous needs uh, on our uh, streets. So those are the items uh, before us. Uh, now it's time to hear uh, from the public. Uh, so let's proceed accordingly. Uh, Madam City Attorney, if you would uh, take us through those portions that you're obliged to apprise us of. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To the members of the public calling in, when it is your turn to speak, please state your name and which of the agenda items you would like to speak on. You have one minute to speak on one agenda item or two minutes to speak on two or more items. In addition, those who would like to address the committee with general public comment will be provided one additional minute for a maximum up to three minutes per person for all agenda items, including general public comment. We will inform you when your time is up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you are not speaking on topic, or if we cannot tell whether you are speaking on an agenda item, you will get one brief warning from, the, from myself or the chair. If you do not immediately get clearly on topic, or if you stray off topic, you will forfeit the rest of your time and we will move on to the next speaker. We will take up to 40 minutes total of public comments today. Please, please press star nine to request to speak. As soon as you hear someone address you on the phone, Please press star six and state your name and state which agenda items would like to speak on. Thank you for your cooperation. All right, thank you, Madam City Attorney. Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. Chair. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-431-9380, and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted to, for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. Please note, if you are listening to the meeting on a computer or speakerphone, you will need to turn down the volume on those devices before you speak. If you do not turn down the volume, there will be an echo. Again, once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. That concludes the instructions, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you very kindly. Let's then proceed uh, to uh, those who wish to be heard by way of public comment. First speaker, please. Caller with the last four numbers, 1660. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Hi, yes, this is, uh, my name is uh, Craig Brill and I'm calling uh, for general uh, public comment. You have one minute. Um, I think it is incredulous that you guys are still discussing adaptive reuse of buildings to get our uh, unhoused population off the streets and into housing with supportive services so that they can get the mental health treatment that they need. The fact that you guys keep having meetings after meetings and do not get things done is the height of the arrogance and paucity that I find in this city council. I would urge you guys to act, to act faster to support Buscayano's uh, motion to start enforcing our no camping laws and get people off the streets, into shelters, into housing, and into the medical treatment that they need. You would never let your grandmother with cancer sit on the street homeless. You would make sure she was in a proper institution that could care for her. We need Thank to you do for your today. testimony. Uh, your time has expired. We do thank you for your testimony. We'll take the next speaker. Caller with the last four numbers, 5436. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Uh, yeah, I'd like to speak on general public comment, please. 
have one minute. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to say, uh, unsurprising that Joey Buckets is once again missing a uh, committee meeting today as he does his uh, Carnival Barker campaign stunt. Um, I really would like you, Mr. Chair, to remove Uskaina from this committee. He has no interest in progress. He is using the committee. He is using the city council as a vehicle for his campaign. That is it. He once again throws a bomb yesterday calling for this Rule 54 motion to bring that sadistic Blumenfeld 20-1376 uh, motion to criminalize poverty and homelessness in front of the full council. It's a real slap in the face to you to sidestep your ability as the chair to run the committee as you see fit. And it's very clear that he has no interest in solving any of these problems. He should be removed from this committee. He is a huge impediment to progress. And Sir, he is your using... Time, your time has expired. We do. Um, thank you for your testimony. We've gotten the thrust of your remarks. Thank you very much. We'll move to the next speaker. Caller with the last four numbers, 7059. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Good morning. Uh, Zachary Warma calling on items number one and general public comment. You have one minute for the item and one minute for general public comment. Good morning, Chairman Ridley Thomas, Vice Chair De Leon, and honorable Good council morning. members. Zachary, Zachary Warma, Legislative Affairs Manager with the Downtown Women's Center. First calling on behalf of DWC and the 5,500 women we serve annually in strong support of the city's proposed right to housing framework. As proposed by you, Chair Ridley Thomas, this, the right to housing framework addresses a powerful equity blend when women face particular gender barriers in accessing stable housing, oftentimes waiting more than two and a half times that of men for over 10 years to access housing. We are in strong support of this committee continuing to embrace this framework. As a general public comment, since December, this committee has engaged in vigorous and meaningful dialogue on some of the major issues underpinning houselessness in Los Angeles, and in doing so, have mass, uh, materially advanced the city's comprehensive crisis response system. As members of this committee, I urge you to reject the attempt at next Tuesday's full council meeting to circumvent the Homelessness and Poverty Committee and force a vote on fundamentally overhauling the city's regulations regarding encampments and bulky possessions. Both in policy and process, this motion introduced yesterday seeking to re-implement LAMC 5611 and 4118 is the wrong solution to balancing the needs of housed residents, businesses, and our unhoused neighbors. Rather, any policy that seeks to affect the lives of tens of thousands of unhoused Angelinos should be initiated in this committee and in a way that centers equity, harm reduction, and trauma-informed practices. Thank you for your consideration of this request. Thank you for your testimony. We'll now take the next caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 3318. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Hi, yes, this is Richie Serjanko from uh, People City Council. Just give a uh, general public comment, please. You have one minute. Yeah, I just want to uh, reiterate what the past two callers had said. Uh, it was funny that the, the first caller was calling in support of Joe Buscaino's motion. Um, one, Joe Buscaino isn't even here. He's off campaigning. And two, the motions that he proposed aren't even in, in front of this committee. He overstepped uh, you, Mr. Ridley Thomas, and put it uh, directly on onto uh, the council agenda uh, with that special rule. And, uh, you know, that's downright disrespectful uh, to you, Mr. Ridley Thomas, uh, especially everything that you've done, uh, you know, pushing for a right to housing in Los Angeles. Joe Buscaino is now saying that he wants to criminalize homelessness and, um, and poverty in Los Angeles. Um, which is, you know, antithetical to the ideas that, you know, the people here uh, on this committee and committee chair Ridley Thomas are, are pushing forward. And I, I think you downright, frankly, should remove Joe Buscaino from this committee. It shows he doesn't care. He doesn't come to meetings. Um, he, he's out campaigning Sir. right now. And Sir, he's campaigning your time on, has yes. expired. Uh, your, your two Thank minutes you. have Shout expired. Shout out Carl Marks. Thank you for your call. We will now move to the next caller, presumably Frederick Engels. Thank you so much. Proceed. Caller with the last four numbers ending in 1404, please press star six to unmute yourself. 
Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Fred Sutton with the California Apartment Association. Uh, item number one and general public comment. You have one minute for the item and one minute for general public comment. Honorable committee members, homelessness is the most pressing and top priority for the region. And we look forward to seeing many of the elements in the right to housing framework being implemented. We request the council offices and the housing department work with housing providers and operators to receive feedback and understanding on the nuances of the eviction defense aspect. Increasingly data is showing an economic rebound is happening much faster than anyone could have, could have anticipated. There is an incredibly high demand for labor and the direct rental stimulus from the federal and state government are working and need to be distributed faster. Further, the eviction wave that has had many policymakers concerned appears less and less likely. Indeed, the largest amounts of outstanding rental that we are seeing are for higher income earners. We must focus our efforts on effective strategies to help those truly in need. We respectfully request inclusion in stakeholder engagement on this aspect to hear housing provider concerns and to provide meaningful feedback. Thank you for all you do. We appreciate your time. Thank you for your testimony. We'll take the next call up, please. Caller with the last four numbers ending in 3047. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Good morning. This is Jessica Rogers, president of the Pacific Palisades Residents Association. I would like to make a general comment. You have one minute. The more I think about the desire you have to put the suffering street dwellers in sheds at our beaches and parks, in our most public spaces, and desperately needed spaces for Angelinos and close by cities who otherwise have little quality of life in their neighborhoods, the more outrage I feel. This is a matter of integrity. Even the suggestion of creating a feasibility study at these locations is an absolute disgrace to the institution you represent. The list of more compassionate, helpful, and lasting solutions is endless in comparison to this suggestion. It's either the creation of complete incompetence or a calculated political move to protect your interests at the expense of millions of people. You have full responsibility for your actions. And there is still an opportunity for the city of L.A. to get a grip on our humanitarian crisis. It starts by making the well-being of humanity your priority above all your other interests. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your call. We'll take the next caller, please. Caller with the last four numbers, 4791. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Caller with the last four numbers ending in 4791, please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Let's move to the next caller, please. Caller with the last four numbers ending in 3829, please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Good morning. Uh, this is Deb Yaleidner Pratt with the Apartment Association of Greater Los Angeles. I'd like to speak on agenda item one and general public comment. You have one minute for the item and one minute for general public comment. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to echo the um, comments of uh, Fred Sutton and also say that we recognize that homelessness is the result of a multitude of issues and necessitates a tailored approach. As the committee continues its evaluation of a comprehensive homeless strategy, we urge the committee to establish tailored solutions and the provision of supportive services. At this juncture, there is a significant amount of rental assistance funding available. It is critical that those funds are efficiently distributed. Moreover, housing production has and continues to be a vital component in increasing the state's desperately needed affordable housing supply. 
We welcome the opportunity to engage with the committee to discuss equitable solutions and work and ask that you work with housing providers in addressing this critical societal concern. Thank you. We thank you for your call and we will now take the next call, please. Caller with the last four digits, 6481, please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Hi, good morning, honorable chairman, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Marie Martos. I'm calling to speak on general public comment. You have one minute. I am calling on behalf of Kilroy Realty Corporation to urge this committee and the LA City Council generally to take action on providing greatly needed services for our unhoused residents. Every single day that goes by without council action is a day that thousands of individuals experiencing homelessness go without desperately needed shelter or supportive services. The city must move forward in taking active steps to resume compassionate and humane cleanups, increase outreach efforts, and identify both temporary and permanent shelter options across this city. This crisis deserves to be met with urgency. We need to collectively take action that will help make our streets, parks, and sidewalks a safe place and sanitary place for all Angelinos. Thank you. We appreciate all your efforts. Thank you for your call. We will now take the next caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 1529. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Good morning. My name is Veronica Sante, S-A-N-C-E. And I believe I would like to speak on item number one, as well as general comment. You have one minute. Item number one. Go, excuse me? You have one minute for the item and one minute for general public comment. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I am very sympathetic and empathetic to the homeless and houselessness problem. I live in uh, Councilman District. I live on the corner of Buckingham and Santo Tomas. I have two homeless people out here I, on the sidewalk. I am a renter, not the building owner. I have called the office. Mary Jones referred me to Hopix. Hopix comes out, but we have a problem. This homeless lady is using, urinating by my living room window. We need to get better housing for the homeless and the houselessness. This, our community is a very decent community, but it, it's going to end up looking like the new ninth and District 8 with all of these uh, mobile homes and with these sidewalk uh, residents. She's on the sidewalk during the day and she's on our property at night sleeping. We call the, the police. I call. I ask for the, them to send a, a, a mental health advocate, not not the LAPD, to, to, to arrest them. But we need help. We need help. We need help in, in, on this, in this neighborhood, on this corner, in your district, sir. Please Hear, hear my plight. I'm close to being homeless and houseless myself. But, you know, we, we need help. And if we can't get it from the city council, where are we going to get it from? Is this whole neighborhood, your, is your whole district going to start looking like the, like uh, Manchester and Western and, and, and all up and down in the new ninth? No, uh, uh, Councilman uh, Mark Wrigley Thomas, we can't have that in, in, in this district. I sympathize and I empathize. I've even called. I, I, I try, I've tried to get get these homeless people help, but now they're at my window, urinating and defecating. I, I can know what what am I to do? I'm begging you to do something in your district, sir. I'm begging uh, the city council to, to thank do you much, or whatever ma to be done. Ma'am, your time has expired. Uh, your plea has been heard. Um, and uh, we will respond accordingly. I'll take the next caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 1475. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Hello, my name is Tamara. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I'd like to speak on item number one and general public comment, please. 
You have one minute for the item and one minute for general public comment. Great, thank you. So this issue of homelessness is not a new problem. The city has been uh, just neglecting our homeless community for far too long. I mean, we can look at Skid Row as ground zero for decades. So we have the resources. We need city council to do your job. Y'all were mandated by a federal judge during the pandemic to house people. What, maybe 1,000 or 2,000 got uh, housed? What happened to the rest of the people? We still have an ongoing pandemic, which is houselessness and poverty. Uh, Measure J, what is going on with Measure J? The community has done a great amount of work to say where our resources and money needs to go, yet city council and other folks are pushing back on Measure J now. Why is that? We need to put 54% of our general fund goes into law enforcement when it could be going into services such as mental health and houselessness and health care, so on and so forth. We need city council to do your job. We have the resources, people. Let's put our resources to work to where they really need to go. And as far as my general public comment, Mr. Mark really Thomas. We need you to take action in the Merritt Park Crenshaw District, especially with Downtown Crenshaw Coalition that's trying to buy the Downtown Crenshaw Mall. Why is David Schwartzman blocking in Deutsche Bank, blocking a black community from owning property to uplift and preserve our own black community, right? Mark Ridley Thomas, we need you to step in. We need you to take action. The money's been given, a bid has been put in, right? But Deutsche Bank is b blocking the bid. Why? Because it's the black community wanting to buy black property, right? So Mark Ridley Thomas, we need you to remove the fence as well in the Merritt Park. We need those public uh, bathrooms open that the taxpayers pay for. We need the trash picked up on Crenshaw. Why are the people on the Crenshaw district having to pick up their own trash? Well, thank you very much for your call. White folks to do that. Uh, your time you, has day. expired. Uh, thank you for your call. It was an omnibus presentation. Thank you so much. We proceed to the next caller. Caller with the last four digits, 9842. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 9842. Please press star six to unmute yourself. All right, we will um, move to the next caller. Obviously, uh, Frederick Engels is not prepared to speak at this moment. Proceed. Caller with the last four numbers, 1882. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Yes, uh, my name is Antonio Mesa. And I call in regarding yeah. about, uh, about uh, Eastman, uh, Original leader, uh, I been having so many problems. Uh, These people has been here since uh, uh, March uh, 2020, and somehow uh, the problems I've been having is basically uh, blocking the, the the sidewalk, and uh, that's right beside my uh, my house is the Eastman, and I've been claiming some of the uh, property, which is uh, the I've been paying taxes for the property, but somehow. The city has been promised me they're going to uh, remove it, and I'd like to see if it, uh, they go back to this uh, system and clean up uh, uh, system so they can remove it. I uh, appreciate that, uh, uh, Rory Martinez, who helped me in, in this situation. Thank you very much, and I, uh, I appreciate what you guys do. Thank you for your call, and we will now take the next caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 8099. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Hi, I'd like to speak on items number four and six, as well as general public comment. You have two minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Okay, um, first uh, I'd like to ask um, how many vacant units are currently in the city of Los Angeles? Um, 
we're never going to be able to build our way out of homelessness or hire our way out of homelessness. What we need to do is come up with innovative strategies to utilize the housing that we already have, whether it be changing occupancy limits or uh, other such regulations to allow for more dormitory style housing. Homelessness is not an unsolvable issue. All it requires is having a place to sleep every night. You cannot be homeless. Um, I think that at times how we do things undermines the goals here in LA. So uh, let's try and focus on the goal, not and come up with all, different strategies on how to get there. Thank you. Thank you for your call. We will now take the next caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 7287. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Hello, I'd like to speak on item number six and general uh, comment. You have one minute for the item and one minute for general public comment. My name is Robert Aguayo. I'm from the Centro de Pueblo, and I wanted to request that the submitted RFPs proposals for item number six be re-reviewed with the full consideration of the needs of the community and the inclusion of recreational space that was lost to the community or will be lost to the community as a result of this project. We want to know why the City of Los Angeles Task Order Solicitation number 51 and the, ho the Housing and Community Investment Department requested information about the Central's playground activities and the community needs if these needs were not going to be considered and awarded points in the review of the proposal. Only one developer fully integrated recreation space in their design and received the lowest score due to the reduction of units and cost per unit. In a sense, they were penalized for fully including the community needs in their design. We feel that um, these RFPs should be re-reviewed, not just amended, but re-reviewed considering the community needs and the fact that we're going to be losing uh, recreational space in the community. Uh, we are the only location that will actually be losing a resource to the community um, by replacing it with another, another project. So we want these uh, RFPs to be re-reviewed uh, with, with, with a promise to the community and to the youth that you know that that we provide services to and also utilize the recreational space. On public comment, um, I wanted to say is what what is the the communities uh, you know what can we do when we are promised something and we are told by council office and the community um, city departments uh, that they're going to um, include our needs and then those things are not actually considered. Um, we don't know what our, our, you know, what our options are once that happens. Um, throughout this process, we've been told your, your needs are going to be met. Anything that's lost as far as recreation space or public space will be replaced within the designs, and then sir, they are not. Yes, so your time, what, sir, your time has expired. Uh, what district do you live in? Uh, district um, 13. All right. Uh, you should follow up uh, accordingly. I am uh, reasonably confident that they will be prepared to um, uh, address uh, the needs that you are, are raising and just keep pressing. All right. Thank you. Next well, they caller, haven't please. done it in the past. So I, next I next know, caller, please. Caller with the last four digits, 4609. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 4609. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Yes. Yes, I'd like to speak on item number six. You have one minute. Yes, we would like the RFP to be re-reviewed and include the community in this process. And a successful design will bridge the intent to provide a maximum allowable number of affordable dwelling units while creating similar but re-envisioned amenities that will be 
available to both the participant and local recreational program and also the public. And also, it's very important that uh, this recreation was also used for mental health services or clinical services or uh, through the pandemic. So these, this is very much needed in the community and we would like to request to be the RFP be re-reviewed. Thank you so much. We thank you for your uh, call. We will now take the next caller. Uh, we have uh, approximately uh, 10 minutes remaining and there are uh, at least uh, eight persons wishing to be heard. Uh, please govern yourselves accordingly. Thank you very much. Next caller. Caller with the last four digits, 7870. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Um, hi, my name is Mayra Ceballos and I'm speaking on item uh, number six. Um, I think I wanna reiterate the sentiments of the previous callers on agenda item number six. The community was consistently promised that their input would be included in the design of this new housing uh, development and that just didn't happen. All we are requesting is that the council consider, you know, um, their commitment to the community uh, when they're seeking their input for these giant public housing developments. We fully support, you know, homeless uh, housing, but we also want the community to be informed, aware, and educated, and uh, included in the process of determining what will go up in their very own backyard. Um, so I just urge the council to reconsider. Um, you know, perhaps working with a contractor to get them to uh, conduct some community engagement activities uh, as they begin the project or throughout the project. Uh, all we want to make sure is that the community's voice is uplifted, specifically because there are many folks in the community in Echo Park that are consistently uh, ignored uh, and um, uh, aren't allowed or aren't encouraged to be part of this process. Thank you. Thank you for your call and your testimony. We now go to the next caller. Caller with the last four digits, 2579. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Hi, I'm a resident from CD4 and I have general public comment. You have one minute. This council needs to reinstate the no camping ordinance now. Another person was murdered yesterday, just a few blocks from my apartment. Who's to blame? this council because of your careless ordinances. Stop the meetings and start housing today. We have 90,000 vacant units in the city. And Raman, how could you sign the so-called people's budget and practically eliminate the policing budget? You gave the police less than 2% of the general compared to the 55% it normally receives. Have you noticed the relationship of defunding the police to murder going up. You have the data now, start reading it and reacting to it. I urge this council to make our streets safe again. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll take the next caller. Caller with the last four digits, 0236. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Kim Monson. Um, I um, would like to speak on items four, five, seven, um, and to general comment. You have two minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, council members. To permanently in poverty, you have to turn off the spigot. To, you have to have a clear definition of what the population is and what their plight is. Please stop using political think tank branded terms that focus on housing as a remedy. The term homeless, unhoused, and neighbors sound beautiful. Well, the lifestyle of these people is not beautiful. Um, and it should never be used to describe people living on the streets, in parks, in shelters, in encampments, in trailers, in RVs, outside of RV parks. These people are not homeless. These people are gravely disabled, squatting transients. An ugly term, but it's a real term. we got to get real. The true homeless people are motivated 
dreamers, like temporary couch surfing people who sleep in their cars, you know, like actors, comedians, artists, or youth, um, uh, youth that have aged out of the foster care system, runaways and undocumented immigrants, those are homeless people. They have the ability to work and contribute, but they are homeless because of their life situation. The people living on the streets and parks and RVs and underpasses are greatly disabled. They are a danger to themselves, to others, and to property. They have psychiatric and, and addiction problems, which have disabled their ability to groom themselves, house themselves, and to maintain employment. Their conditions are highly treatment and intervention resistant. Uh, there can build houses, they won't stay. Okay, try to treat them in these little um, tiny homes and different uh, at low-income housing, they will not, they'll be resistant because they need to be contained in hospitals. Their conditions are chronic and they will have them for a lifelong uh, round. Um, their functioning will not improve unless we have effective action. Um, enablement is the kiss of death and invitation of proliferation for mental illness and addiction. Investment in one's treatment has to be part of the process. So treatment can only happen in isolated, contained psychiatric hospitals away from the general population where it can be where what the issue is with them can be diagnosed where they can be identified um don't waste money on building homeless housing refund mental health flood the mental health system with money help existing and past psychiatric psych, uh, psychiatric hospitals reopen and expand um saint vincent daniel freeman olympia medical center Thalians at Cedar sinai the VA Hospital, Los Encinas, Del Amo, UCLA Reagan, USC, Northridge Medical Center, Kedron, permitting, cra uh, uh, permitting gravely disabled people to safe park and live on streets and underpasses is inhumane. It's summer. The cockroaches are coming. People do not belong to live in parks. Um, squirrels and bugs do. Um, please stop calling these people homeless. Housing is not a problem. It is a psychological and addiction problem. Thank you very much. Your time has, uh, ma'am, your time has expired. We thank you for your call. We'll take the next caller, please. Caller with the last four numbers, 09917. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Hi, I'd just like to give a general public comment. You have one minute. Thank you. I uh, sincerely applaud the efforts of Mark Ridley Thomas to take charge of the homelessness situation in Los Angeles. However, I think one of the uh, glaring omissions from this project is to simply utilize all the existing and available housing that we have in the city that has gone grossly underutilized. We completely forgot about any sort of plan that we can have with FEMA. We've completely forgot about even the LA Business Council urging the uh, city and county to commandeer hotels. We've completely disregarded the role of landlords who extract rent from housing but do not provide housing in their role for in this crisis, and we're not uh, utilizing any of the empty vacant units that we have in the city to, to house people. We are not going against the uh, Airbnbization of housing in the city to combat the homelessness crisis, and I would like to see more urgent leadership on the issue of what we are doing about the, the landlords and other interests that are keeping the housing that we already have in this city from being used the way it should be, which is to house people. Thank, Thank you very much for your call. We urge you to move Your time has expired. We appreciate your call and your testimony. We'll take the final speaker now. Caller with the last four digits, 6685, please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the items you wish to speak on. Hi, my name is Rose Olson and I would like to comment on item number six. You have one minute. Good morning. Uh, I will be brief. Uh, as I said, my name is Rose Olson. I am Senior Vice President with Related California, and we are very pleased to be considered for 1140 North Glendale Boulevard. Our company has a long history of working in partnership with the City of LA on transformative projects. And I did want to mention that our proposal does include a full open-air basketball court, 
a fitness room, a multi-purpose room, and space for, space for social services, in addition to 108 units, of which half will be reserved as permanent supportive housing. We understand how important it is to have uh, for the city to continue to provide high quality recreation spaces for the city's families and youth. And I wanted to mention that RFPs are just that, they're a proposal, they're very preliminary. So our team did engage with uh, El Centro del Pueblo prior to our submission, and we're committed to continuing a robust community engagement process with El Centro del Pueblo and other community stakeholders and in partnership with CD13 staff. So thank you again and we look forward to continuing to work with the community on this project. Thank you very much for your call. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that the committee that does um, conclude the public comment portion of our meeting today, we thank all of those who called in. Uh, it's now time for us to move uh, the agenda uh, with respect to those items on consent. Um, the chair is prepared to move the following items, uh, items three, four, five, six, and seven, uh, as I indicated, uh, and um, that these item one and two to be discussed by the committee. Uh, members of the committee, uh, on item number six, I'd like to offer, as I indicated, the following amendment, uh, require the developer to engage in comprehensive community outreach with the surrounding uh, community, including consulting with El Centro de Pueblo as the building program is developed. That's the extent of the um, amendment. Uh, any other uh, item number four? Make um, uh, a technical amendment uh, that is the uh, CEO, if you would offer that now, uh, Madam CEO, we can proceed from there. Thank you. Good morning, Meg Barkley, City Administrative Officer's Office. Um, the um, amendments submitted, the amended recommendations submitted to the clerk have been revised to add recommendation number 19, changing the service provider for 8501 and a half South Vermont from Hopix to New Reflections Incorporated with a corresponding contracting recommendation added at recommendation 20I. All right, thank you very much. That's the amendment on item number four. All right, uh, with the balance as amended, um, uh, the chair moves, uh, the vice chair uh, second chair. the item. I'm sorry, I don't Should see we... anyone's hand. Yeah, Mr. Chair, let me uh, let me just call um, uh, file item number six for special, and if we can bifurcate, and then the rest, uh, um, we can move forward uh, as you uh, choose. All right, uh, Mr. De Leon, uh, you request that we take item number six off of consent. Yeah, just for a quick uh, All right, because we have um, a fair amount to do, I'm going to uh, accommodate the request um, of members, uh, which means that we take up item number three, uh, four as amendment, uh, amended and uh, seven. Um, uh, let me restate three, four, five, uh, and seven. Um, and, um, if we are in order there, I will move those items. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez, um, uh, ask that you second, uh, and, uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, council member Ridley Thomas. Aye. Council Member De Leon. Aye. Council Member uh, Raman. Yes. Thank you. Council Member Rodriguez. Aye. And Council Member Buscaino. I believe he has, he's still absent. So that is four votes in the affirmative, Mr. Chair, and the items are approved. Um, and number four approved as amended by the CAO. All right. Thanks very much. We'll take. Uh... Uh, the next item up, which is item number one, um, we'll, we, we will get to the item that was taken off consent and calendared it accordingly. All right. Um, item number one, as has been indicated, um, is to give an update on the right to housing uh, 
and so is with us to give a brief update. Uh, please proceed. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, committee members. Um, there are slides that someone is going to put up. Thank you very much. So, um, as you remember, at the May 13th meeting of this committee, we presented the right to housing framework in response to a motion by the chairman, um, Council Member Ridley Thomas, Council President Martinez, and Council Members O'Farrell and Blumenfeld. Um, the framework, the right to housing framework, will propose a plan for progressively implemented measures within an aggressive but realistic time frame to move every Angelino um, towards enjoying a right to housing. Next slide, please. So the goal of the right to housing um, framework is to build on our um, efforts that are already reflected in our comprehensive homeless strategy that was originally adopted in 2016, amended in 2018, and that set forth a hundred, over 100 strategies, some of which are listed here, um, some of which we've actually added since then. The right to housing effort will create a cohesive organizing framework to um, organize our response to the homeless crisis informed by community partners and identify opportunities to scale up some of these efforts as we move from response to recovery across a full spectrum of the needs focused on four pillars. Next slide, please. The four components of the action plan that we talk about a lot when we talk about addressing homelessness are first prevention, preventing households from becoming homeless. Um, we have as one metric that we look at 215,000 renter households in the city of Los Angeles that are extremely rent burdened and therefore live in sort of month to month risk of falling out of being housed into homelessness. Um, then we have immediate shelter and interim housing needs for the approximately 29,000 unsheltered people um, in the last point in time count. We have permanent affordable and supportive housing, um, which is not only uh, a goal of moving unhoused people into affordable and supportive housing, but it's also part of what prevents people from falling into homelessness. And our regional housing needs assessment goals um, tell us that we have about 185,000 units that are needed over the next eight years to address um, the pent up housing demand, not only for people who need supportive housing, board and care homes, other sorts of um, more intensive housing supports, but the people that are at risk of falling into housing because of um, uh, the unaffordability of Los Angeles's housing. And finally, um, street engagement, connecting with the, those unsheltered individuals on the street, um, providing sanitation, um, care, you know, water, um, other services for those and outreach for those living um, some of which are living in the 170 priority encampments that have been identified. Next slide, please. Um, so since mid-May, we've been working to develop analysis of the needs, goals, resources, and gaps across each of the four components because responsibility for tracking and responding to the needs in each area is spread not only um, across our external partners, but even within the city family across um, many departments. It's a complex task and we've sought assistance from the Corporation for Supportive Housing, which has already been working countywide on a systems gaps analysis and is available and um, excited to help us develop an accurate and meaningful analysis. With the summary of current needs and gaps, we will start looking at scenarios for expanding or changing, redirecting our work in each of the four areas as we consider possible goals for first the next five and years and then beyond. Our goal um, de facto to date, driven by federal funding rules and our own policies, has been to focus housing resources on the most vulnerable, literally those most at risk of death on the streets by using the coordinated entry system to drive um, most of our housing programs. We could continue using that goal. We could modify it to expand resources that are missing for the most vulnerable resource residents, such as um, board and care homes, and recuperative care, we could modify it to focus on subgroups such as homeless seniors or people with disabilities. There are directions that we could go that would um, expand or perhaps redirect some of our efforts. Key to this work is engaging stakeholders in the advocacy, business, and academic communities, and especially in the lived experience community 
um, for input on the most effective ways to meet these goals. Shelter Partnership is working with um, the city, family, and CSH on the community engagement process, um, which will include focus groups and surveys asking about issues such as balancing immediate needs while increasing housing opportunities, tactics and program changes to advance progress more quickly, additional components that should be added to the pillars we've identified, and strategies or program models to be prioritized in each area. Next slide, please. So um, right now we're at uh, June 24th um, with the expanded team, including Corporation for Supportive Housing and Shelter Partnership, we'll be working over the summer on the analysis and the community engagement process in tandem and return to this committee in October with the draft framework and action plan um, that would incorporate all of the stakeholder input. Thank you um, for the opportunity to give you this update and I'm happy to answer any questions. Well, thank you for your uh, presentation, um, Ms. Sewell. Members of the committee, are there questions that you wish to oppose to Ann Sewell in terms of the um, right to housing update? There will be yet another, but we uh, intend to keep the committee as informed as is reasonable along these lines. Uh, any uh, questions um, for Ann? Seeing none, uh, well, and thank you for plowing away and continuing to keep the committee apprised, both as we sit as uh, the committee of the whole, as well as um, the conversations you'll have to update individual committees as you deem uh, appropriate. I'd also like to uh, call to the committee's attention uh, that the LA Times uh, on June 6th um, uh, endorsed uh, the right to housing in the city of Los Angeles and uh, for that matter in the state of California. And I think it might be worthwhile taking a look at it. Um, this is an idea whose time has come and the committee's work in this uh, regard will be uh, rather indispensable, I believe. Uh, now, Anne, I think the next step um, is continue, as you mentioned, to seek input through community outreach. And I, I feel, uh, members of the committee, that this will be invaluable. And um, the next report will reflect uh, those uh, insights. Um, those who are uh, interested in uh, collaborating and giving input should uh, uh, reach out to uh, HCID and uh, make this a kind of vibrant discussion, dynamic discussion that is deserved in the middle of all of what is going on around um, the issue of homelessness, houselessness, the issue of street engagement, uh, interim housing, uh, permanent housing, as well as the robust conversation that is warranted with regard to uh, prevention. Uh, with that, if there are no other comments on uh, the matter uh, before us, item number one, uh, we will uh, note and follow uh, the item and proceed to uh, the next item before us, which is item number two. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you just uh, indicate um, uh, what item number two is for the record? Yes, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> item number two is a chief legislative analyst report dated May 4th, 2021. Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority report dated March 3rd, 2021. Communication from the Los Angeles County Chief Executive Officer dated March 2nd, 2021. And communication from the Committee for Greater LA dated May 19th, 2021, relative to evaluating, reforming, and refining the homeless governance structure and system. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, colleagues, as you well know, over the last few months, uh, the committee has been uh, engaged in what might be called a probative approach to the rather um, uh, daunting matter of uh, homelessness governance. Um, should recall that on April 22nd, uh, 
we began the work and it culminated uh, the committee's work on June 10th. So we engaged in what is essentially a four part series to examine and discuss governance and that conversation has been full. Um, on March the uh, 3rd, um, LASA issued its report on uh, March and May the 4th, the city, uh, the CLA that is, issued its report. Then on, uh, again on March the uh, 2nd, um, the chief executive office of the county issued a report. And finally on May the 19th, the committee for Greater LA uh, issued the report. Now we uh, paid attention to um, all of those in our four part drill down. So last Friday, um, council president facilitated <clears throat> as she had promised, uh, promised earlier, uh, the first round of a discussion on governance and specifically focusing on the CLA report. The council itself had, uh, uh quite a bit of, um, input, uh, to give and questions to ask at that point. And tomorrow, uh, as part two of the full councils, uh, taking a look at the issue of the governance matter, um, the uh, opportunity will be to continue uh, to discuss uh, largely the non-governance pieces of the CLA's report, as well as the members may deem it appropriate to address uh, some of the unfinished business on governance from this past Friday's discussion. And so uh, that follows a motion uh, that was made uh, several months ago uh, by uh, the president of the council to have the entire council um, uh, take a close look at the issue of governance, most specifically at Lawson. And so the, the discussion on governance is not um, academic. It shouldn't be considered obtuse or intellectual in any way. This is real stuff um, because it revolves around uh, what? Uh, I believe achieving uh, better results, better outcomes, and thinking through how we get to a more effective system uh, with, with respect to the matter of homelessness overall. And so um, the committee's work uh, from our last uh, session was essentially to try to figure out uh, what recommendations as a committee we should uh, try to move forward. Now, let me just simply say, given the break um, that we will have the next time this committee will be convened will be in um, August. And so the energy that is attached to uh, the question of governance uh, seems to be that which we should capture and move forward. Um, and so I've uh, taken a close look uh, at the recommendations across all of the reports uh, and um, want to share with you uh, what that looks like in terms of a path forward uh, that the committee would uh, move and then ultimately at the uh, discretion of uh, the president of the council would schedule that uh, not to preempt the discussion tomorrow at the board or at the council, but in effect um, at a date to be determined. But our work will have uh, been advanced for the benefit of the entire council as well as the committee, obviously, uh, to um, consider. The bottom line is this for me. If we're to be successful, the multiple institutions and jurisdictions responsible for responding to this crisis must be aligned on the mission, the goals, and the outcomes pertaining to homelessness and or houselessness. I uh, said uh, with frequency that at these meetings that the city and the county has to partner. They both have to partner uh, in order for us to do our best work. And if we are going to make a real uh, dent, uh, we have to look in the mirror and we need to know 
what is simply uh, going on and what we need to do better. Uh, and what I've taken from these reports is that we need to do uh, a hard reset to ensure we are aligned with our key partner. So broadly speaking, I propose that we establish a two-prong approach. Now, I want to make sure that the entirety of the uh, committee has a document that we should be looking at. I think um, uh, pursuant to the work of the um, uh, city attorney, we've uh, uh, given a fair amount of uh, information already, but I want to make sure that everybody's following accordingly. Madam Clerk, is everyone in receipt of the documents? Oh, uh, sorry about that. Mr. Chair, I, I defer to staff. I believe they were uh, going to circulate the, the document. All right. It is done. I just want to make sure the committee is yes. uh, good in that regard. Thank you, sir. Now, Madam City Attorney, I think we are in order to proceed, are we not? Uh, yes, as long as everyone has the document and uh, the clerk has it as well, and we'll put it in the council file for each council file number. All right, thank you very much. Uh, the first point I want to make uh, is this. Um, um, I see the hand of uh, Council Member Rodriguez. Uh, did you wish to be heard, ma'am, or shall I continue to set the table? Uh, you can go ahead and set the table and just, uh, I'd, I'd appreciate because I, I would like to add to your comments, but, uh, okay. and, and we'll follow up as well, but you can go ahead and continue. All right. First, we need to be uh, more direct, accountable, and transparent in discussions between the city and the county. So um, the first portion of the uh, recommendations seek to um, garner support from our colleagues at the, the county to establish a standing uh, intergovernmental uh, panel of elected officials, and that's to establish and to stay aligned on our common vision, mission, and proposed outcomes uh, for our homelessness um, uh, system. So that's the first piece, that intergovernmental panel of elected officials. Secondly, uh, the panel should be supported uh, by um, a, um, a city county policy team that would um, work in tandem with uh, the elected panel uh, to develop um, a clear action plan uh, to reimagine homelessness uh, governance, governance uh, for this region. And there, the plan should focus on four areas. The first is, um, as you see in the recommendations, establishing a clear mission and goals and uniform metrics for measuring our project. That's the first point. The second point is to provide recommendations on immediate operational changes with a specific initial focus on street engagement and an outreach strategy. Uh, thirdly, um, the recommendations on an updated governance framework has to be put in place. And this should include specific updates or to the uh, JPA, that is the Joint Powers Authority, and more specifically with LASA, uh, and uh, an assessment of this model in comparison to other con con continuum uh, of care. Uh, and it would be uh, the hope that through this process, we would better delineate clear roles, responsibilities, and authority for uh, one, the city, two, the county, and three, ALASA as, as it exists and as we seek to go forward. And any other related agencies, uh, because we have to achieve a higher level of, 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 of accountability. And finally, uh, the fourth point would be that the plan should uh, provide recommended updates to uh, the city's uh, homeless strategies as we deem appropriate. And I offer this um, as a work in process uh, or in progress. Um, it is essentially to capture um, the salient points of uh, the four sessions that the committee has had 
the chair did hear the voices of the members of the committee that says that we need to move forward uh, rather than continue to um, uh, let this rest um, in committee, but to get it uh, in this open space beyond the open space of the committee's domain, uh, ultimately onto the council and to get the work moving. Uh, this is, is somewhat of a heavy lift. This is more uh, bureaucratic in nature than we would uh, uh, desire, uh, but this is a massive uh, uh, amount of movement that has to happen when you talk about the city of Los Angeles, the county of Los Angeles, a third autonomous entity, namely Los uh, And so it requires a lot. It should not rest. We have to keep leaning in in order to make progress. If we don't fix this, I'm afraid that we uh, will be stepping on our own promise with respect to addressing the homeless crisis in our uh, uh, communities from uh, Council District 1 all the way to Council District 15 and uh, beyond that to the unincorporated areas of the uh, County of Los Angeles. Uh, and so that comes forward to you uh, as a motion for our, our consideration, Ms. Rodriguez, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Ridley Thomas. And I would like to second that. And I, I do have uh, an amendment I would also like to offer. And But I, I want to start by, uh, you know, I want to I want to thank you for, I think, really capturing the spirit of, of you know, we've heard a lot of presentations about and, and different observations from different stakeholder groups identifying identifying the areas where uh, we need to improve and you know by all accounts those of us on this committee uh, and members of this council need to primarily be focused on the fact that failure is not an option we have to fix what is broken and absent an alternative there's been a lot of really broad strokes and conversations about what's been frustrating everyone but it really requires us uh, to be more hands-on and closely engaged in helping to really lead that reform. It requires it because a lot, you know, it's uh, when you have uh, two different governance agencies between the county and the city, uh, you can't, staff sometimes is not uh, in a position to better facilitate the outcomes that are being led or driven by uh, elected leaders uh, here on the city side or on the county side. And so this is going to, I believe, help us get closer to the outcomes that we all desire and that we can have greater accountability, that we can reform, uh, you know, the, the portions that, uh, that have been clearly outlined and delineated as being fractured in this process. Um, but I think part of what has contributed to uh, even some of the confusion around what works and what doesn't work has to do with not being more intimately familiar uh, with what legally we can do uh, and uh, what, what restrictions there are. And so I, I wanted to add an additional amendment that the LA City, LA County Reimagining Homelessness Governance Action Plan also include the creation of a visual diagram showing the workflow from client intake to placement, including the various steps, assessments, referrals, approvals, et cetera, that are required to house an individual. Because I think it's both beneficial to the elected leaders that uh, perhaps have varying degrees of understanding of what the process actually looks like. Uh, but more importantly, really daylights where uh, some of the flaws are in this process and i think this will be it'll do us all well including members of the public uh that by reading a report may not generally understand what that workflow looks like so i want to add that amendment uh because i think sometimes you know they say uh, a picture can say a thousand words and i think uh documenting it uh with that workflow in a chart uh, would be helpful as part of this process so that everyone is really clear on which agency is involved at what portion of this process and so that we can have real accountability and transparency for everyone to understand. Thank you very much for that, uh, Councilwoman Rodriguez. We appreciate it. Um, other members of the uh, committee who wish to be heard on the item that's before us. 
Mr. Chair, let me add. Sure. This is a huge undertaking, and we just we just received this ten minutes ago. Yeah. And this is process wise, and you know I appreciate the the, the work in in real time to internalize this and then and to offer a, a, a vote either in support of in the affirmative or in opposition. It, it's very difficult. Uh, because we just haven't had time uh, to, to, to read this, uh, the principals nor the staff. And I, I don't know if we can meet to have a special meeting so we have time to go through it or uh, because I know it's agenda today for a vote. If it's possible, you know, we don't have to go through the, the normal, uh, uh, whatever our, our schedule is, I don't know if it's every two weeks, but if we can do one, uh, to Friday or Monday or Tuesday or whatever is possible, so we can just just internalize it, and so we can understand it. Uh, fair enough question, uh, Mr. De Leon. Uh, the the thrust of the effort is to keep moving. Don't know what opportunities may necessarily present themselves um, to um, uh, schedule another meeting. I will say that. Um, um, uh, as the matter continues to move forward, uh, this is open to amendments. What this is, is a distillation of the salient points uh, brought forward over the past uh, two months of the committee's uh, deliberations. Um, and taking in the information. And so I um, uh, would hope members of the committee that we uh, could move this forward uh, as it um, uh, presents itself with the full recognition that um, uh, it will be heard uh, as deemed appropriate in terms of scheduling by uh, Councilwoman uh, Martinez's um, uh, decision-making processes, but the committee will have done its work. Uh, Mr. De Leon, members of the committee, um, it will be close to August by the time uh, we get back to this. I can assure you that it's fully possible for things to slip. We have to keep this moving. Otherwise, this will become heavier and heavier. Um, and so it is uh, the chair's uh, hope that the committee will have um, an appreciation for moving this forward with an idea uh, that when it is ultimately scheduled on the council uh, floor, that amendments uh, would be um, uh, appropriate and uh, likely uh, to be um, taken um, as suggested. This is not a finished project. Product. We are trying to keep it moving. No, no, I understand. Uh, the, it's not a finished product, and, and I understand the, the the hard work and investment from from the staff uh, and from yourself uh, of, of putting this together. It just feels like we're asking to vote for something that we don't know. We haven't had an opportunity to to dig into move it forward to the floor because the president wants to move it to the floor even though we as the committee members who vote and make the decisions you know on, on hence our membership of this committee homeless and poverty to to move it forward uh without knowing the content and understanding the content and do it after the fact and then whatever amendments suggestions that we may have just go ahead and do it after the fact. Um, I, I think you'd agree with me process wise. It's, it's sort of kind of, we're doing it, we're doing it backwards. But if, if you believe if we move it forward today, that when it gets to the, the, the full, uh, the full body, the full council, uh, per, uh, per your uh, comments that we can weigh in at that time or obviously yeah. for that, right. And, and make the necessary yes. amendments. To, to move forward. And, and I think, you know, maybe this, um, I'm not sure the objective of the president, you know, in this case, uh, this process to be up, up front, and maybe we should have conversations 
with her as well too on this specifically. But if, if you're gonna, if you tell us we can do it after the fact, then I guess we can do it after the fact, you know. Um, but well, I, your your points are uh, well understood, um, and I would simply uh, say that my read, uh, the chair's read of the committee was that it wanted to move rather than let this sit. Uh, a careful review of the uh, transcript made that abundantly clear, frankly, by a majority of the um, uh, uh, committee uh, essentially saying uh, it's um, time to move forward. Now, we're not rushing. Uh, we're being deliberative. Uh, we're not um, preempting uh, the the council's opportunity to complete the process that is uh, underway that we began last Friday. Uh, at, at minimum, this is uh, being done in tandem. It's called terminus. It is uh, arguably uh, catalytic in the sense that it is giving um, some specific things for members of the council uh, to look at because the committee has done most of the work in distilling four different reports by design. LASA, the city, the county, and finally, uh, the work that came from uh, the group uh, led by Miguel uh, Santana and uh, Ray Sonenshot. Uh, all of that has been taken under consideration. Um, and so um, process open, process ongoing, process dynamic, uh, but we've got to keep it moving. No, no, I understand. I'm sorry. That. Yeah, let me say no argument yeah. there. There's yeah. No, no objection. Uh, it's just a question of, you know, as you know well, right? Uh, yeah. We vote. We want to know what we're voting on. You know, exactly. The, the work investment and the, the sense of urgency. There's there's no objection to that. There's no right. Uh, 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 right. There's no space between you and me, and, and, and as well as others, on that issue. It's just knowing what we're voting on before we vote on it. Like, even at the, it's a huge undertaking. But process-wise, yeah. obviously, if we move it along, if the courtesy vote, right, which we right. did, uh, without knowing the details, uh, uh, the devils and the details, uh, um, I guess between now and I would assume next week we go into recess, if I'm correct. Uh, if I'm correct on the dates or the next yeah. or the week yes. after, yeah, correct. So, will this be a, a vote next week on the floor, or we? No, 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 no determination has been made to that uh, uh, extent, as far as I'm concerned, um, as far as I'm aware, and that would be uh, largely up to the office of the president, who has not made a determination. Her uh, uh, desire. Uh, that office's desire was to make sure that uh, uh, an original motion, which was, was to say to have a review of governance and more specifically a closer look at the issue of LASA, uh, largely done uh, by the chief legislative analyst, uh, would be heard by uh, the entire council. The committee uh, which was impaneled uh, subsequent to the original request of that motion, uh, looked at not only the chief legislative analyst, but again, the county's work, Lassa's work, and uh, uh, the fourth piece uh, of the puzzle in terms of uh, the Weingart convened uh, study. Uh, and so I don't know that it will land um, that quickly, uh, Mr. De Leon. Uh, outstanding question, but I do know that urgency uh, is of the hour. And my uh, years of experience dealing with the bureaucracy is that it gets heavier and heavier the longer it takes for us to move a serious reform and accountability agenda. I heard that uh, from members of the uh, committee, I'm hearing from you, you share that point of view, uh, and to the extent that that is the case, I, um, as chair, would request that we move forward with the uh, appreciation for this is 
amendable. I see the hand of Council Member Rahman, and uh, I'd like to recognize her at this point. Um, I just had a question for you about kind of the process of what you're suggesting in the amendment. So you're basically creating a new configuration of elected officials who will then work in partnership with the county to put together a new homelessness governance action plan. And I was just curious whether you had thoughts or whether you had an idea of who, which elected officials and who makes the decisions about which elected officials are included in that. Like, what does that process look like? Because this would be in a different body from this particular body that's discussing on these issues. And so wh where does this go after that? Uh, appreciate the question. Uh, yet to be determined, we move it forward. And the populating of the uh, committee is uh, made by virtue of a vote of the uh, council. Um, and uh, recommendations will be made. Uh, and there's a range of options uh, in that connection. It is already to be understood as indicated by the uh, uh, appointment of the uh, president of the council, um, uh, the individuals who have been engaging up to this point um, include um, uh, the president, the pro tem, uh, the budget chair, and uh, the um, chair of homelessness and poverty. Uh, we remain agnostic as to the composition of this uh, of inter uh, governmental department uh, or group panel of elected officials. Uh, and that's a clear example of the fact that we're not trying to close up every button here. Uh, this is a breathing uh, set of recommendations so that there's input to be uh, brought into uh, focus. It can happen in an open and transparent way. But right now we have no formal structure um, that causes the city and the county uh, to interface. And uh, I say that by way of critique because my own sense is that uh, a lot of that should have been happening in the context of LASA, be reminded. It is a joint powers authority. The signatories are the city and the county. One would think that in that context, such would uh, take place. In view of the fact that that is not the case, it seems that something else is warranted that would tighten that particular piece up. Um, and uh, I would offer the additional insight uh, that this is not elected officials alone. There are two parts. One is uh, the elected uh, uh, group. The second part is the, um, uh, the policy team. Now, what does that look like? Uh, it would be um, uh, presumably the uh, chief executive uh, officer uh, of the county. It would look like the CAO uh, of the city. It would look like the CLA of the city, minimally, and you build out uh, from there, there are issues of audit and uh, accountability questions. So at some point, uh, you would bring into the conversation on a discretionary basis uh, the issue of uh, the auditor controller um, and um, in both the city and county context uh, as deemed appropriate. And so uh, there has to be a lot of thoughtfulness and it has to be done without uh, the propensity to, pro to pro proliferate more bureaucracy. Uh, so this is a, a, th a threading of the needle that is very, very uh, important and therefore the need to move forward. Other questions for the, from the committee at this point? Mr. Rodriguez, I see your hand. Yeah, so Mr. Chair, I wanted to uh, uh, understand clearly that you accepted my friendly amendment for the documentation and the workflow. Indeed, as amended. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Uh, are there questions or comments from staff on this 
uh, from the CEO, from uh, the CLA, from uh, Lhasa, city attorney. Can I ask uh, uh, Mr. Wickham through the chair, um, your thoughts of, of uh, the, uh, the proposal that's, that's before us? Is there a CLA's perspective? Uh, this certainly creates a space for the county and city elected officials to speak directly and discuss issues directly, which would be productive. And um, it, it's not something that has been in place to date. And this would help um, facilitate that conversation. The staff component will bring together um, representatives from the various offices who are doing direct work on this. So that is helpful and provides an opportunity for staff to support the work of the council and supervisor. So this is certainly a structure that um, establishes a, a pathway for conversation that could be productive. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Wickham. Mr. Just add just one last comment is, yeah. it, it seems like the CAO's office, the CLA's office, every office, uh, knows about the details of the plan um, and sort of kind of takes away from the work of the committee here, the work that we do here, that we're supposed to do here. Um, because but you made it clear, you know, Mr. Chair, that the, the, the office of the president wants it that way um, and wants it to be sent over to the full body committee. Um, but that, that's why it, this is odd that we're voting on something that we just got, you know, 10 minutes ago. I'm not blaming you uh, at all whatsoever. Um, it, it just, it, it makes me feel very, very uncomfortable because we, we all share the collective spirit uh, with a sense of urgency to do something sooner, you know, rather than, than, than later. Um, but uh, uh, it just takes away the sort of the, the, the governance or the responsibility of the members of this committee. So it's like everyone knows about this, except those who are going to vote on it, you know. Um, so, uh, but I, I appreciate, you know, your hard work uh, as a yeah. this issue. Mr. Chair, uh, if I might, yes. uh, I, and Mr. DeLeon, I, I just want to take a moment because I, 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 I understand, um, but I think to uh, Mr. Ridley Thomas's point, this was derived out of, frankly, a lot of frustration that we haven't formally engaged in kind of, a, you know, really drilling down on how do we resolve a lot of these issues, many of which, I mean, again, we have consistently heard uh, now for the last couple of months, all of these uh, different, um, you know, reviews of what's broken uh, in the different you know what what parts need to be corrected and so then it goes from here it goes to the larger council we continue to talk about it and talk about it this is about formally getting a group in there so that we can just resolve and start to work through a lot of these problems and so you know the references to uh the work that's been you know all of these items that we've discussed endlessly uh, but, you know, I think there's been uh, recommendations that have even come from LASA seeking a working group. Everyone, we just need to get our hands dirty at this point and dig in and start leading us out of the problems. And so that's kind of uh, how I see it. So I can appreciate, uh, you know, the concerns. I think there's still uh, clearly an opportunity. This is a recommendation from the committee. Uh, but I think, you know, we've had uh, multiple uh, sources provide overviews in terms of where we need to identify areas to improve. Um, and I think, you know, personally, I, it, it make it lends itself for me, I think every member has a different level understanding of, uh, of what this workflow looks like. Uh, and we've had a variety of, of uh, organizations that have, you know, 
provided uh, an overview of it and, and uh, you know, reviewed LASA and just all the different components and the county's role. But I think we just really need to get uh, some of the members more directly involved, uh, more consistently with some of our key stakeholders, uh, uh, obviously, namely, you know, when we talk about the CAO or the CLA's office, but we need to really just get in there and keep leading this um, because, uh, you know, we keep talking about it, but there's been no change. And this is the, the effort is to let's get in there now, guys, because I'm, you know, and I, I know we're all equally frustrated about talking about it. This is about, you know, proposing the opportunity for us to finally get in there uh, and uh, start leading this change. Thank you very much for that um, uh, set of comments, um, Ms. Rodriguez. The additional comments that I would make are as follows. This is largely a distillation of the salient recommendations as we pull them forward from the respective reports. If there are more, uh, they can be brought forward in the context of when this is set for a full council. Um, and so substantively, there's room to do more here. Uh, the second point that I would make, and it is not uh, a small point, uh, if we use the language of urgency, we should behave accordingly and not um, rush unthoughtfully, but um, keep this moving. Um, I'm telling you, Without fear of contradiction, the longer we delay, the heavier this load will be. Um, and we just can't afford not to keep it moving. Uh, I think part of the critique is that this process is uh, to some extent uh, in, imperfect. Uh, my uh, comment to that would be welcome to democracy. Uh, it is such, uh, uh, we touched the uh, city attorney with regularity uh, to figure out what the constraints and opportunities are pursuant to the Brown Act and uh, were advised accordingly as we move this we need to be very careful as to um, having the committee deliberate outside of the appropriate uh, confines and, instruct and instructions um, and that in some uh, significant way, uh, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, is uh, an answer to uh, some of the concerns that you're raising. I would say further is why the chair has moved forward uh, with the perspective that, that is, this is not a locked box. It is essentially a vehicle that's moving that input will be um, not only solicited uh, and in fact, uh, welcome. Uh, members of the committee, uh, there's no further uh, conversation on the matter at this point in time. The chair is prepared to uh, take the matter up and dispose of it accordingly. Uh, this move by the chair has been seconded by Ms. Rodriguez. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk, please call, call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, Council Member Ridley Thomas. Aye. Council Member De Leon. I only as a courtesy for process. Thank you, sir. Council Member Raman. Yes. Thank you. Council Member Rodriguez. Aye. And let the record reflect, Mr. Buscaino is uh, absent. Uh, that's four votes in the affirmative, Mr. Chair. Uh, the uh, item is- as, a, as amended, uh, Madam Clerk, okay? Correct, sir, as amended by you and uh, Ms. Uh, Rodriguez as well. Thank you very much. All right, um, I think uh, we now um, move to item number six, which was um, uh, taken um, off of consent at the request of uh, Mr. De Leon. Um, uh, might I remind the um, uh, committee that the thrust of the um, effort on item number six um, uh, was essentially to offer uh, an appropriate amendment uh, that is to um, require the developer to engage in comprehensive community outreach with the surrounding community, including consulting with El Centro de Pueblo as the building program is uh, uh, de developed. Um, 
it is my understanding that there is a representative from 13 council district who uh, might be uh, able to um, address the item. This is a matter in the 13 council district, so courtesy extends to them accordingly. Uh, name, rank, and serial number, ma'am. Thank you, council members. Thank you so much for uh, letting me into the meeting. Council member O'Farrell himself would actually be here right now, but he's at a live um, video taping at channel 35 right now, so he's unable to attend. Um, I'm here to simply address any questions. Your name that, and your uh, role. Your name oh, so and your sorry. role. So sorry. I thought I, I had already done that. It's Christine Peters, uh, policy director for council member Mitch O'Farrell. Thank you. Council District. You're most welcome, sir. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here to address any questions. Mr. De Leon um, called the item special, so I just wanted to make sure that any questions or concerns would be addressed. I've worked on this project since uh, the motion was introduced May 2nd, 2018. In addition to that, uh, Mr. De Leon, should you be desired uh, with uh, representative from AIDS, uh, uh, Daniel Ayon is here. Uh, did I get it correctly or did I uh, create another language? <laughs> no, that's right. Thank you. Okay. All right. And, uh, and Sewell is here as well, uh, ably assisted by Daniel. So uh, the gang's all here, Mr. De Leon. Let your soul be free. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Chair. And I, I did try contacting uh, Councilmember O'Farrell uh, this morning uh, to, to have an opportunity to chat. No questions per se, but rather uh, I'm a huge, huge advocate as we all are for uh, affordable housing, you know, which I've been supporting uh, new housing projects all across my district. Uh, each and every one of you have been doing so. That's why I wanna commend Councilmember O'Farrell for fighting so hard, you know, fighting so hard to get affordable housing uh, in his district, uh, CD13, which I'm very, very familiar with. It's important that we build projects when we do, that we think about them uh, holistically uh, and, and how they impact the local community. And I say this because I'm very familiar with this location because it's it's right next door, a smack next door to my old uh, Senate uh, office when I was a state senator, as well as uh, the leader of, of uh, everyone's California State Senate. And, my successor now, Maridana Vaso, uh, also shares that lease too. It's a Senate office that we rented, our, our tenants, we were tenants, and our landlord was uh, it was and is for Maridana Durazo, El Centro del Pueblo, one of the, the last organizations uh, in Echo Park that, that serves the remaining uh, very low income uh, children, kids, young men and women, kids of color. Uh, who have lived in this neighborhood that has been gentrified uh, for many, many years. And I know that 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 spot specifically because I've given away many, many turkeys, uh, many, many dinners and lunches, a lot of toys uh, during Thanksgiving, as well as um, during uh, 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 Christmas, you know. So in, in Centro del Pueblo, as we know, that currently uses that city lot for this project that's going to be built on for outdoor recreational spaces uh, for these children. And I've always been concerned, and I know this, uh, the, the debate happened uh, before a lot of us. I think the only persons here were uh, Miss Monica Rodriguez and, and Mr. Buscaino, I know it predates us, uh, Miss Raman, uh, yourself and, 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 and me uh, before getting to the city council. Um, but I am concerned that the existing development doesn't factor in the need to provide the, the recreational space that these children are, are losing in this new development. And I know this is a sensitive issue. I know that uh, Mr. Uh, O'Farrell has worked very, very hard, which I give him credit and recognition for securing that affordable housing. Um, but it's something that I, I don't see in this proposal. I, I know that the related company uh, which has several projects in, in my district. Uh, the Grand, most notably with Frank Gehry on Grand Avenue, right across the street from uh, 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 the Walt Disney Concert Hall. And, and just last week, uh, we were together uh, in uh, one of, uh, uh, in uh, Rose Hills in El Sereno community, uh, doing a, a groundbreaking ceremony that the related company uh, was a part of. Uh, nothing but respect for all the staff members that worked there. Um, I'll just say finally that 
absent the project included space for the children's recreational area, it, 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 this measure has the votes. And again, I'm respectful of Mr. O'Farrell and the hard work of him and his staff and what they're doing. But this is something that uh, is because of my personal ties uh, to this piece of property and specifically because of it is Centro del Pueblo, because they were our landlords. Uh, and I know, that, again, this was a very sensitive, it was a very controversial, controversial issue, respectful of everyone, but this one is uh, a measure that I, I cannot support uh, today. But I do want to recognize that it has the vote, so we'll move forward to the full body of the council. Uh, but it's my hope that something can land in the future, uh, whether it's a redesign with a related company that actually finds that recreational space um, or right across the street, you know, if we can be creative with a parking lot that provides the, the, the income to the city of LA, perhaps we can do a deck on top of that, uh, or we can have that, that park space, that recreational space uh, for the community, especially for those young children, uh, uh, those young children of color uh, who uh, families are being gentrified uh, out of Echo Park. So that's all. And again, I recognize that it will move forward. Uh, I, I commend, you know, Mr. Farrell for his hard work, and uh, uh, I thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I may, I think I can very quickly address some of those issues, and then H. Sid could certainly speak to the costs involved for taking over parking lots. Uh, you may, but I think uh, a council member uh -huh. did have her hand up, and Ms. Rodriguez, uh, you want to do Yes, further, I just... No, yeah. I just, I, I wanted, uh, thank you, Mr. De Leon, for your commentary. Obviously, El Centro de Pueblo has uh, a long, long standing history of service in the community and, in particular, uh, supporting young people. They've been an instrumental uh, organization. And, you know, I just want to, you know, I, I recognize the chair's uh, comments and, you know, and uh, uh, as well. Um, you know, I think one of the biggest difficulties we've had in identifying and utilizing uh, Mr. De Leon, as you've mentioned, you know, the, the need for us to identify city-owned space uh, for the purposes of constructing uh, PSH projects to help uh, mitigate the costs, the, uh, you know, exorbitant costs of uh, development. Um, this, you know, sadly was one of those uh, circumstances, uh, and you have to try and figure out a way to, to marry all those pieces. That said, um, I too am very concerned about making sure that the community, you know, the diversity of this community and its needs are also met because of the longstanding history and contributions that El Centro has had. So uh, just, you know, I, I'm sympathetic and empathetic to, uh, to all of the challenges each of us face in our districts in trying to marry the balance of all of these uh, pressing needs. Um, and so my, my hope is that in good faith and good uh, conscience in respecting uh, the historic contributions that agencies like El Centro has made that there would be a very, uh, you know, uh, heavily participatory process that involves uh, them as well as many other stakeholders uh, representative of the community makeup. And so, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge your comment. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Peters. Thank you, sir. Um, so very quickly, um, as I said earlier, the motion was introduced in May of 2018 to um, assess the property for redevelopment as an affordable housing, um, permanent supportive housing opportunity site. Um, as you all know, um, we are in a housing crisis, we are in a homelessness crisis, and every city owned property is being looked at for redevelopment right now. And we certainly have shown um, our ability to reuse those properties in our district. And this, this proposal has been going on since 2018. Um, the uh, board members and, and the, the membership of El Centro de Pueblo have been at the table at conversations with our office, with HCID, uh, with the development team for related, and I believe all of the other development teams that were bidding on the RFP to, um, to try and score to, to be able to help redevelop this site. The most important criteria from day one for Council Member O'Farrell is to make sure that the recreational uses available to El Centro de Pueblo would remain and be replaced on site in a reduced and different form footprint than originally. Because if you've ever been to the site, and as obviously Council Member De Leon, as a former neighbor, knows, and as our office, which is across the alley, 
um, as well. We're there every day. Um, it's a very large former DOT um, parking lot that used to accommodate up to 170 parking spaces. Um, all that's left for DOT now are nine parking spaces, which is why the cost is incredibly reduced for the city to try and redevelop this site because DOT waives um, parking spaces under a certain number and nine is, is, is in that criteria. So we don't have to actually pay replacement costs as opposed to some of our other city loan lots like we've used in Hollywood, which were cost prohibitive and raised the cost per unit on the affordable housing we were developing. So that was a real issue. Um, we've had countless community meetings, gotten tremendous feedback from the entire community, including El Centro, but all of the other um, stakeholder groups in the area. As, as it has been stated, Echo Park is an incredibly diverse neighborhood and it, it is no surprise to anyone uh, since we've been on the national news quite frequently with the, um, with the rehoming of many of us, our homeless neighbors at Echo Park Lake, which is one block from this facility. Um, so the need is there. Uh, the fact that the developer was able to come back with 108 units was a huge boon as we were thinking we wouldn't be able to get more than 99. So um, what we would like to do is to continue to move forward, continue to work with the entire community, including El Centro. Um, we would ask that anyone um, like yourself, Mr. De Leon, respectfully, if you have a good relationship with them, if you would ask them to collaborate with us rather than just come back because HC can speak to the fact that our office has consistently asked that they be met with and that their needs be met. And the RFP was held up because we were not happy with the interactions that were happening with them. And their final reply to HCID on what their needs were um, started with a regulation size basketball court, a convertible indoor outdoor soccer field and volleyball court, an indoor track, an indoor pool, a kitchen for a culinary training program, conference rooms, performance space, dance floors, television, film, and theater, a 99-seat black box theater, a STEM lab with computers, and security features that prevent unauthorized adults, and meditation space or quiet space for other clients. So this was not in the spirit of collaboration. This was detrimental to the RFP. Um, and it was really unfortunate because it was the council members' insistence that their needs be met. And instead of telling us what they really need, we actually, HCID, was not given the tools that they needed and when related and other consultants met with them to find out what their needs were i'm not sure that they got any answers that were many any more valuable to them so hopefully moving forward once we award this contract a spirit of collaboration can be um can be met with with the board members of el centro de pueblo because we really do want to meet their needs but we also have to meet the crisis of our time just providing housing for our unhoused neighbors so i thank you so much and i do apologize the council member wasn't able to be here i you know but I hope, hopefully, was able to convey um, as much work as we've done to date. And if H Sid could fill in anything else, that would be great. Any additional remarks on the part of H Sid? Ably done, Ms. Peters. Thank you, H uh, uh, Sid. Uh, any remarks that you wish to offer at this point, uh, Ms. Sewell? I see you're unmuted. Proceed if you wish. Uh, no, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to confirm that, um, yes, we definitely included uh, community engagement as a point in the RFP and, and um, everyone had uh, not only expressed some amount of engagement with the stakeholder community, including El Centro, but understands that it is a requirement going forward of whoever is selected to have a um, meaningful and robust community engagement process. All right, thank you very much, uh, members of the committee. I think the matter has been uh, uh, presented. Um, Mr. De Leon um, requested that this be taken off of, of um, a consent, as was originally the case. The chair has offered um, an amendment that encourages ongoing um, substantive community interface and outreach. Um, um, and with that, I don't know that there's anything further that needs to be uh, discussed other than to move this to a, a roll call. Uh, and with that, I'm prepared to move it. Uh, Ms. Rahman, uh, I presume you're prepared to second it. Um, if there's no further discussion, Madam uh, Chair, I mean, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chair. Council Member Riley Thomas. Aye. Council Member De Leon. No. Council Member Rahman. Yes. Council Member Rodriguez. Aye. 
And as we know, Councilmember Buscaino is uh, absent. That is three votes in the affirmative, and the matter um, is approved. As amended. As, am as amended, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that disposes of all items of which I'm aware. Uh, are there any other items to come before the committee at this time, uh, Madam Clerk? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, but I do want to just add one quick line uh, for consistency's sake uh, that on that um, action for item six, we are noting and filing the, uh, the housing report and approving um, the CA report as amended. Um, so that clears the desk, sir. So ordered. Uh, thank you very kindly, members of the committee, uh, for your participation today. We are now adjourned.